Maybe you've been using Unreal Engine for a little while, and you're comfortable with blueprints and with some of the editor features, but you find yourself wondering, what does it look like to start getting into C++? Well, this video is for you. What I've done is I've taken the first person template, and I've added just a little bit to it. So there's a, a shots counter. Let's see how that works. And that's implemented by, uh, in the first person character blueprint, I've added a variable called shots fired. It gets incremented when I shoot. And over here in the uh, widget blueprint, you can see I have a text field, default value of n, but it's actually using a binding to get that field out of the first person character. Okay, so the super class of first person character is character, which is a C++ class. Um, what I would like to do is start by moving this shots fired feature from blueprint into C++. So let's go over here and say file new C++ class this is going to be a character. And, uh, you know, let's just call it my character for now. That's fine. Now, this takes a moment while it generates the code and runs the compiler and launches Visual Studio. Okay, so now we can uh, start by looking at the .h file, or the header file, and we can see that it declares our class, my character. Uh, the a at the beginning tells us that it is an actor subclass. Um, and we have a couple of uh, methods. This is the constructor, and then these three are being overridden. You can tell by the override keyword. Um, but actually, for my case, I don't care about these methods, so I'm just going to eliminate them. And then over in the implementation file, I can get rid of these default implementations as well. Good. What I do want to have here is a field called uh, shots fired. So that'll be an uh, int 32, 32-bit 32 integer, and I'll call it shots fired. Um, let's go ahead and stick a comment on it. Now, putting this into the header file makes that field exist, but it won't be exposed to blueprint unless we declare it as a U property, which is a macro, and we have to give this a parameter like blueprint read write, which tells us that blueprints are able to both read and write that field. So let me save that, hop back over to the editor, and click that compile button. Okay, so now I have a class called my character that has that field in it. It's not currently connected to anything I have in Blueprint. Um, what I want to do here in first person character is first uh, remove that variable that I previously added because I don't want to uh, shadow the one from C++. So I'll eliminate that. Um, I'll go ahead and compile and save. Now, of course, it's going to be broken uh, because there's, there's nothing here, but that's okay. Because what I'll do is change the parent class here from character to my character. Now what that means is that this class now inherits the field from my character. So can we say get shots fired here? Not just yet unfortunately. Because we made a change in C++ we need to restart the editor so that it will see that change. Some C++ changes you can hot reload, some of them you can't. Um, but if you see something like this try restarting the editor and see if that fixes it for you. Okay, back in the first person character blueprint, get shots fired, there it is. So not only can we read it, but we can also write to it because this uh, that's what this increment macro does. We'll compile and save. Let's go over to shots fired and the implementation here of my binding. Compile that. It turns out um, that still compiles because this has the same name as it did before, so that's convenient. It's a convenient refactoring. Um, let's run it see everything's still working, except now that value is actually being stored in the C++ implementation rather than in Blueprint. Now, I'm also using Perforce for version control, and what I'd like to do now is submit my changes to version control. Uh, but if I do that from here, you see it only sees, uh, well here, save that map, and it only sees a couple of files as changed. It doesn't see my new C++ files. and That's really important. Once we're using C++ along with the editor, if you're using version control, you can't rely on the built-in source control here in the editor to track all of your changes in C++. Um, so here, again, I'm using Perforce Helix. So what I'll do is uh, grab my source folder and make sure that's marked for add. And that'll put it in my default change list. 
Notice there's also a .sln file here, which is a Visual Studio Solution file. You do not want to track that because that's a generated file. So this looks like a good set here. Let me go ahead and make my submit from P4V. And I can say uh, refactored shots fired to C++. So that's the very, very basics to get you started. Um, but if we talk about the design of this, what did we do? Well, we, we added a public field to this class. And if you've studied software architecture at all, or object-oriented design, you know that public fields lead to uh, increased coupling. It can lead to bad software structures. Really, what I'd rather do is have this field be private, and then maybe have some uh, accessor and mutator methods to modify it. So let's make those changes now. Um, if I come in here and just start, uh, let's say, make this private, for example, and try to save, Visual Studio gives me a warning that this is a read-only file. Well, remember, that's because I'm using Perforce. So I need to make sure that I go in and I tell Perforce, hey, I'm going to be changing these two. Let's check them out, which conveniently puts them into my default change list. OK, so back over here, um, I'm going to make shots fired private, and in fact, I'm going to make it so that it's not even uh, visible to Blueprint at all, because I want my Blueprint classes to only access this data through my accessor mutator methods. So let's make those. I'll make a pair of public methods. Um, so it'll be something like this. Let's say increment shots fired can be uh, a method that just increases that value. And then we'll need to ask uh, how many shots have we fired. That should work. Now, just like we had the U property macro to expose shots fired to Blueprint, I need to do a similar thing here with a U function macro. So I need to say that this method is Blueprint callable, and this one too. Good. Um, now, of course, I need implementations for both of these. Uh, so let's see. Can we go to the definition here? Nope, there isn't one yet. So let me just do this manually. We'll hop over here and say we have a my character. Let's see, this is my whoops, avoid method. Here we are. Increment shots fired. Good. So what is this going to do? Well, it can just say shots fired plus plus. Right. Pretty simple programming if you've done any C plus plus or any of the languages that are based on C. You've seen stuff like this before. Um, or, in fact, if you've only done Blueprint, right? <laughs> Blueprint uses this notation because that's what comes out of the C programming language. Um, let's do a similar thing with get shots fired. Uh, just copy and paste that, change it to get shots fired. This is a method that returns a value. And here we can just say return shots fired. And that should be all we need for our implementation. That looks OK. Um, I'm going to hop back to Blueprint. And again, in order to stop myself from getting into some trouble here, I'm going to intentionally break this for a moment, because I know that field won't exist anymore. Um, and similar thing here. That's fine. OK. Um, now let's go ahead and compile that C++ code. Oops, compile failed. Let's take a look. And that's the C++ compiling. Um, missing variable type. Oh, the problem here is I have the semicolon that doesn't belong there. right? Um, the compiler is seeing that as a statement, but it's not a statement. It's just a macro that precedes the declaration. So, Good, simple error. Back over to the compiler. Good. Um, so now, of course, if I if I run this, it won't work um, because what I need to do is is put these pieces back in. So now, instead of saying directly add to that public variable, I want to call increment shots fired. And notice uh, this actually is seen by the editor uh, without having to close and reopen it. So that's nice. Good. Um, and over in shots fired, we can ask this get shots fired. Um, good. You can plug that in like this. There. Let's see if everything still works. Nice. The binding isn't quite right. So why not? Oh, forgot to plug that in. That'll do it. Good. 
Now, this is uh, a little bit awkward to me. What I would like to do is have this be a pure function because it is, in fact, um, doesn't have any side effects. So let's go ahead and make that change here. We can say this is blueprint callable. Uh, it's also blueprint pure. So save that, head back over to the editor, and compile that one more time. Okay, so back over here, if I create this again, I can just say get shots fired. Now it's blueprint pure. I don't need the execution pin going through. There. And that, that matches my intention a little bit better too, which is always a good thing in programming. Um, so once again, for the sake of uh, demonstrating how uh, all the pieces work, I'll make sure that I save everything that's changed. And uh, if we were to try to do submit to source control here, we can see that, well, the stuff in the source folder is missing. We'll go back over to P for V. Uh, and here I will refresh my change list. There, we can see all these pieces. Let me go ahead and submit that change. Um, so what did I do here? I uh, refactored the public variable to a private variable with accessor and mutator functions. Good, so if you're following along so far, you're doing great. Let's look at one more piece. What if we want to do something like, say, if we shoot five times, we get an achievement. This is a very trendy thing in game design. Um, and we want to put that logic into C++. Well, once again, I'm, I'm changing these, so I want to make sure I check them out. And now, over here, what I'd like to do is uh, increment shots fired. Here it is. Um, the idea here is to say if shots fired is now um, equal to 10, I want to display some kind of achievement message. Um, well, how am I going to do that when the widgets are all defined in Blueprint? Well, here's another cool idea we can use. I'm going to make uh, a function here called um, on achievement earned, and it's sort of a conventional sort of name for uh, an event like this because I'm going to make this a blueprint implementable event. So what that means... Oops. I thought I had it checked out. Let me look again. Oh, I grabbed the wrong two. Uh, these two I can revert if unchanged. Uh, these are the ones I meant to check out. There we go. You watching the video probably noticed that already, but hey, that's how you fix it if you grab the wrong thing. Okay. Save. Good. Saved. Okay. So a blueprint callable function is one that is defined in C++ and called through blueprint. A blueprint implementable event is an event that's defined in blueprint but called in C++. So what I can do here is say on achievement earned and, uh, and that's it. Um, let's go ahead and compile that. Okay, uh, so now let's go to uh, first person character and let's see if we can go to our overridable functions and look at that on achievement earned is now a function I can override so what am I going to do when this achievement is earned well what I can do is I happen to have already a achievement widget that I've created so we'll create that we'll get the uh, player controller and we'll add that to the viewport Gets checked out. Play. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Achievement unlocked. Good. So I hope this introduction was useful to you. Um, all these things that I did in C, I may as well have just done in Blueprint, right? But once you learn how these two things work together, you can start to make design decisions about what kinds of things are going to be more convenient for me to write in C++ and what kinds of things are going to be more convenient for me to write in Blueprint. And of course, when you're working with a team and dealing with version control, you have to deal with the fact that C++ files can be merged. They're just text files, whereas binary assets can't be merged. And that might have an impact on how you make your decisions as well. Uh, so I hope this is interesting to you. I hope this gets you started and excited about using some C++. Happy programming.